James Prescott Jewell was born in 1818 to a wealthy English boor. He and his elder brother were first tutored at home and then sent to be tutored by the famous English scientist, John Dalton. But two years later, Dalton suffered a stroke and was forced to retire. The Jewell brothers then continued their education with tutor John Davies. James and his brother were fascinated by electricity and apparently experimented with electric shocks on themselves as well as their family servants. Later on, James Prescott Jewell became a manager of the family brewery, but the physics remained his real interest. He published his first scientific paper at age 18 on electricity. He especially had a talent on building and improving experimental equipment. He investigated the feasibility of replacing the brewery's steam engines with the newly invented electric motor. Through careful experiments, he found that the steam engines were still more economical than the battery-driven motors because of the high consumption of zinc and acid by the batteries. However, when a motor is running, the heating of the wires, batteries, and motor caught his attention. At age 20, through well-designed and carefully carried out experiments, he formulated Joule's law, which states that the amount of heat produced by an electric wire is proportional to the current squared times the resistance of the wire. This is something we will learn later in the electric circuits unit. Over time, Joule established that Different kinds of energy are basically the same and can transform from one kind into another. This helped give rise to the law of conservation of energy. Joule's most famous experiment is perhaps the one he used to measure the mechanical equivalent of heat. Joule's apparatus kind of look like this. This is a well-insulated container filled with water. There's a thermometer and a pedal wheel. The pedal wheel's axle is connected to this handle and uh, has strings wrapped around it. Each string is connected to a weight over a pulley. Before the experiment began, someone would crank up the handle and lift the weights up high. Then the weights were allowed to fall. While falling, the pedal wheel would stir the water, providing resistance to the weights so the weights would fall slowly. The stir, the water in the container, soon came to rest due to friction, and the mechanical energy inside turned into heat, and the jewel could measure the rising temperature of the water. Of course, this temperature rise was very small, so Jewel had his thermometers specially made by England's finest instrument maker, John Benjamin Dancer. According to Joule, the temperatures could be measured to within one two hundredth of a degree Fahrenheit. Such high accuracy at the time was unheard of, so Joule's measurements were met by skepticism. Michael Faraday and Lord Kelvin were inclined to recognize Joule's work, although they were still skeptical. Through this experiment, Joule showed mechanical energy can be converted into heat, and he measured the mechanical equivalent of heat. The number we use today is 4.186 joules of mechanical energy is equivalent to one calorie of heat. Joule had 4.16 after he took time to refine his measurements. By the way, you do not have to memorize this number. Joule and Lord Kelvin later became friends and collaborators. One of the things they discovered together was the cooling of a gas when the gas is allowed to expand under certain conditions. Jewel died in 1889 at 71. On the gravestone of this brewer and amateur scientist, there is this inscription of 772.55, his most accurate measurement of the mechanical equivalent of heat in English units. He made important contributions to physics especially in thermodynamics, and we named the standard unit of work and energy after him, Joule.